my dear colleagues ladies and gentlemen my dear professors dr av lakshman and dr as balakrishnan professor dayalan we i welcome you all for this fine evening rather i should say it's a fortunate evening because we are going to have we are fortunate to hear on a talk on the recent advances in cancer therapy proton therapy by one eminent and well renowned physicist professor radhe mohan radhe mohan is a well known physicist but still i need to give a brief introduction professor radhe mohan finished his masters from chandigarh university india then he moved on to duke university to do his uh, phd in physics soon after that he joined he took up the medical physics profession in memorial stone catering cancer cancer center new york in the year 1971 He served there in various capacities till 1996, before he moved on to MD Anderson Cancer Center. To his credit, Professor Adi Mohan has got several publications, and has received many awards and laurels. In 2013, Astro, he has been honored with a gold medal. So, if you go to internet and just put the doctor, type Dr. Radhe Mohan's name, you can make a Google search. You'll get all his credentials, the accomplishments. and laurels and what not so with this i end my brief introduction i may request professor radhe mohan to deliver his wonderful lecture i request professor av lakshman to honor our speaker professor radhe mohan thank you for the introduction and um thank you to apollo hospital and john chandi for inviting me to present and thank you all for coming at this late hour to listen to this talk and um so uh, i'm going you know we have had proton therapy since 2006 we have been treating patients with proton since 2006 it started in 2003 when we st- started to build the proton center it took about 3 and 1/2 years to make that happen and then uh for the last 10 years we have been treating patients and um we were um we were uh, told that proton therapy is sort of like a magic bullet there were lots of people who were who thought the proton therapy will be very effective so what i have learned since that time and we we as a team at md anderson has learned since that time i'll tell you a few things about that and uh, since you are going to be building a proton center here in chennai those lesson may be helpful so what is a proton did, did you know that proton there are more protons in this universe than anything else there are more protons i don't know how many there are but that's there are lots of protons proton was also a russian rocket is called proton and it exploded at the first time it tried to fly so it it exploded proton is also the name of a car made in malaysia did you did people buy them here no not it's not sold in india it's not sold in india apparently this did not work either <laughs> so it was a very bad car no <laughs> i don't mean to say the protons are bad it's just that bad things happen to things called protons and then there i do the google search of what are, what are protons what is it that come it says when protons are found outside the nucleus they acquire fascinating bizarre and potentially dangerous properties similar to those of neutrons in similar circumstances i th- i think somebody wrote it who didn't know what he was talking about so actually proton is a greek word means first it is the first element in the periodic table so proton that's why it is called a proton 
So the proton therapy started actually in about 70, 60 years ago. Robert Wilson in 1986, 46, thought that the protons have certain properties that may make them more effective for radiotherapy than photons. And I'll come to that. And then over the years, there were different, not just protons, but many other particles were used for treating cancer. Uh, Berkeley, Harvard cyclotron, and actually largest experience was at Harvard, it's ha Harvard cyclotron from 1961 to, to 2002. This is a Massachusetts General Hospital. And then in Japan, in Loma Linda, Paul Scherer Institute in Switzerland, and then in uh, 2003, we started to build a proton center at MD Anderson. And because MD Anderson started to build it, everybody thought it must be a good idea. So everybody jumped in. Now there are 15 proton centers in the United States, and many more are being built. But my fear is that maybe they don't, don't know what they are doing. So my, my hope is that my lecture will help you to to see how best to treat with protons so that so that uh, protons are can uh, protons can be made more effective it it is an expensive technology as you know uh, i don't want to tell you maybe dr chandi can tell you how much it's going to cost to build a proton center here but it is very expensive so and in theory in principle it can be really effective but protons has, have, to be tr have to be treated in a different way than photons. There are many differences between protons and photons, and it is really important to learn those differences and then make the best use of that technology. Otherwise, the, the cost of it will, may be difficult to justify. So uh, this just to make a point that uh, uh, about 125,000 patients have been treated with particle therapy of that, about 110,000 have been with proton. That's a very small number. It looks like a large number, but it's a very small number compared. It is less than 1% of the patients in the world that have been treated with, with particles. The question, as I mentioned, you know, why proton? They have, a certain, they have certain physical properties. And what you see is a photon, does it work? Oh, it's not turned on. Okay, thank you. Well, I can just use the. Uh, I can just use this uh, pointer. I I can just use this. Uh, this is fine. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Red button, yeah. So. So X-rays and electrons, photons and electrons have dose distribution like this, and protons have a lower entrance dose, and then they reach a peak, and then they fall off very rapidly after the peak, and I'm, you have seen all this. But if, I, if we can manipulate the energy of protons so the peak is in the tumor, then that means dose everywhere else will be much lower, and that's... The, that, that's the basic rationale for using protons. And there are very beautiful examples that have been shown to justify the use of protons. And here is a medulloblastoma case where you can see with x-rays you'll see a dose distribution like this, but protons will stop right here and there is no dose beyond the protons. And this is the same case from a different uh, perspective. And this is an IMRT, intensity modulated radiotherapy versus intensity modulated proton therapy. This is an example from Paul Scherer Institute, and you can again see there is so much less dose outside the target volume. So these are the kinds of examples that have been used to, to uh, justify. So how does it work? Well, protons, when they enter a medium, body or water or whatever, they begin to slow down. They begin to lose energy, and as they slow down, they deposit more and more dose per unit path length. And that means the, 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 they are depositing continuously increasing amount of dose, and that's what form the Bragg peak. They have, and they have a finite range, and they stop and deposit more energy per unit path length at the end of the range. So this is the mechanism of dose deposition. 
but equally important, perhaps even more important, is that as they slow down, for each certain amount of dose that they deposit, they biologically become more effective. So it is not, they are less biologically effective as they enter by the time they reach close to the end of their range, then they are ionizing more densely and they are killing more cells, so the, which, which is something that has not been appreciated. We have assumed that biologically effectiveness of protons is same everywhere. So it is 10%, it is considered to be 10% higher. So the relative biological effectiveness of protons is assumed to be 1.1. And now we are beginning to realize that that may be not, one of the lessons is that 10% that higher biological effectiveness is not, that assumption is not a good idea. We'll, I'll come back to that. So in principle, protons, protons do have significant therapeutic potential as compared to photons, but the evidence, clinical evidence to date, to date has been rather limited. They have been, a few, for pediatric cases, for chordomas, for chondrosarcomas, there is evidence that the protons are more effective, but in many other cases, there is limited evidence, and there are many reasons for that, and I'll explain those. And there have been so few trials. So, you know, if you want to show some the proof, then you have to do a randomized trial between protons and photons and to show that